Okay, next up we've got Rolf Haferkamp who's going to be talking about Kata containers on OpenSUSE. Yeah, hello and welcome. Nice to see so, so many folks here. Uh, my name is Ralf Haferkamp. I am uh, working at SUSE. I recently joined the containers core team there and uh, I've brought with me Dario Fagioli. He's working on the virtualization team at SUSE and uh, together we are talking about Kata containers and what we are doing at SUSE with them or how we integrated them into OpenSUSE. Um, but first, uh, we are going to give like a short overview about what Kata container actually is and how it works. So if you go to the uh, like Kata containers website, you will see a phrase like this. It's a container runtime that provides stronger isolation by using hardware virtualization technologies and then the sentence goes on and on with, with some more words, but this one is the uh, most important one. And, um, well, to show you what that means, let's first take a look at how containers normally work. So, um, in the normal case, you have yeah, your host with the Linux kernel, and uh, every container basically is just a, a single process which is isolated from the host system by utilizing things like C groups, SecComp, uh, AppAmmo, or eLinux, uh, namespaces, and things like that. <clears throat> but still, they are all sharing the same kernel. They are all running on the same host. And so there is, uh, well, it's not as well separated as it could be. In the uh, Kata containers case, Kata uh, adds another level of, or layer of security around that <clears throat> by uh, including all, or by running all these containers inside a small virtual machine. So every container is a really tiny virtual machine with a separate kernel. Uh, inside that virtual machine also the containers are utilizing the standard um, security, security mechanisms that, that containers usually use, like namespaces and so on. Um, but as the additional layer, you have the uh, hardware virtualization which is like isolating the, uh, the system even more from the uh, host system. And um, yeah, Dario will have some details about what additional security that actually provides. Yes. So uh, very quickly, uh, as Lars said, uh, as Ralph said, Kata uh, containers uses virtualization, uh, adds virtualization to the picture of containers. So why uh, using why why doing that? Why? Uh, adding virtualization and why not just let containers be uh, well containers uh, yeah well if we if we think of a scenario where we have uh, potentially uh, untrusted code running inside uh, your containers then uh, uh, one reason would be attack surface uh, meaning that uh, in a standard container uh, in a standard container setup then the attack surface from inside the container to the host if your malicious code running in the container wants to attack the host uh, the attack surface is the one of, it's the interface, the syscall interface of the shared kernel uh, with all its variants, uh, which is huge. Of course, you can restrict it, but it's still a uh, shared kernel between, um, among all the containers. Uh, while on the other end, if you have virtualization, then the attack surface is the one of the hypervisor. And even if you add, if you, if you add to that the uh, device model, basically, so all the abstractions that you need to create virtual devices, then the attack, sur the, the attack surface is still uh, smaller. Then uh, another point, defense in depth, meaning that uh, uh, to actually escape virt with virtualization in the picture, to actually escape uh, if something running inside a Kata container want to escape and do harm at the host level, it needs to escape two layers, uh, containers and virtualization. And uh, uh, so as a matter of fact, what you get is improved isolation, as uh, Ralph has already said. Meaning that, for example, even if someone manages to escape from, uh, com from, from the container, for example, and manages, for example, to exploit one of vulnerability to crash the host, if you are running standard, in a standard container setup, then it, it can actually crash the host and cause denial of service for uh, all the other containers running there. While, uh, on the other hand, in, with virtualization, and so uh, in a Kata container setup, it can only crash it's the virtualization, the, um, sorry, virtual machine where uh, it's running inside. And uh, of course, this all comes at uh, price uh, in terms of overhead, mostly CPU and memory overhead. Um, and of course, we want for this to be uh, as small as possible, even at the price of having reduced functionality with 
with respect to as compared to traditional virtualization because we don't need for example all the features and we want in fact a small and fast kernel inside our own little vms uh, and we also want a small and fast uh, virtual machine monitor and uh, to do that, you basically configure the kernel uh, so that it's tiny and little and it only includes all the features that you need. And as far as machine monitors goes, you can use QMU, which is the most uh, common choice in traditional virtualization, but you can also use others which have different properties. And in OpenSUSE right now, as you will see later in our demo, uh, we are using a smaller kernel than the the, the one we provided by default, it's called KVS small, it's a flavor, it's a flavor of our kernel, although this should be regarded as a temporary solution and we are investigating what would be the best long-term uh, approach and solution. And for a uh, virtual machine monitor, right now you would get, uh, uh, if you use Kata containers on OpenSUSE, you would get them uh, running and using just plain standard QMU, but again here, we are uh, investigating mm, better approaches, including Firecracker and including uh, using QMU with uh, micro VM, which is something being actively developed uh, uh, these days. And I'm done. Uh, yeah, another feature of Kata containers is that it's actually implementing uh, the, the OCI uh, specifications. So the, the advantage of that is that you can just replace your uh, current runtime, in most cases run C, I guess, um, with Kata containers and all the tools that use run C will seam seamlessly continue to work with Kata containers, but now leveraging uh, the enhanced security. So you could just like, yeah, use Podman or Kubernetes with Cryo or even Docker uh, and run uh, Kata containers using that um, without any well, with just very small changes uh, in, in how you use it. Um, important to mention what Kata Containers is not as well. Um, it's not like a tool to run your normal virtual machine workloads inside Kubernetes or something. It's really about running containers. Um, this is a small overview about the internals of Kata Containers. Um, basically, uh, yeah, what's outside the box here could also be um, uh, Podman, for example. Um, and um, Podman would call Conman, which, would, which uh, calls Kata Runtime in the same manner as it would call Run C. Uh, Kata Runtime then will uh, create the uh, sandbox, the virtual machine, basically calling uh, QEMO and talking to it via its management uh, um, socket. And um, there, that will launch the virtual machine. That virtual machine image will, will um, as the single process, start the Kata agent. And um, that is then being used uh, or talked to with in, in a gRPC on, on a VSOC interface or on a virtual uh, VIO serial interface that depends a little on the configuration um, to launch the containers inside the sandbox. And also the standard in and standard out, and uh, these things are going via that uh, VSOC thing. Um, I think that should be enough for, for how the architecture looks like. This is basically summarizing it. Um, some, um, yeah, some words about how, how storage is implemented in Kata containers, like if you, uh, the, the container root file system and, and volumes that you attach to your container, they are currently shared or yeah, injected into the container using the 9PFS file system. And I don't know if you ever used 9PFS. Um, it, well, has some performance issues. It's pretty slow. Um, and there's work underway to, to um, replace that with uh, the VIRT.IOFS, which is, uh, I think, recently landed into the kernel in 5.4 or 5.3. I'm not entirely sure. And also, VIRT.IOFS support is uh, going to be part of the next uh, QEMO release, and that will give much better performance than uh, 9PFS. Um, yeah, some words about how you could use it if you uh, use OpenSUSE. Um, if you're on Tumbleweed, it's just easy. You can just install it. It's available in the standard repositories. Just call Zippo, install. Uh, Kata containers and it will be there. For, for other distributions, we are providing it via the DevilCubic 
project in the open build service and uh, it's there for, for Leap, various releases and also for Celeste. Uh, if you want to play around with that, um, there are two packages actually. There's the Kata containers um, package which uh, contains the runtime and then there's the other package which contains the specific kernel and init RD for, for uh, running the virtual machine. So now for some short demo. Um, first thing uh, I'm going to show is how to use it with, with Podman. And um, as I didn't sacrifice enough chicken for the demo god, I'm just playing a video. Uh, uh, this one. I hope that's big enough for everyone to see. Um, yeah, just to prove this, this is a tumbleweed system which has the Kata containers packages installed. It's basically the latest packages. There's one small configuration change that needs to be made if you want to run Kata containers rootless on your, uh, with your normal user instead of root. You, in, you would need in the local configuration to adapt the uh, temp, temp directory to, to your user's run path and uh, additionally, uh, there's the need to enable the runtime uh, of Kata to be a supported runtime for, for Podman. There's the section runtimes in the uh, libpod.conf, which lists all the available runtimes, and the standard one is run C. Um, this uh, Kata runtime thing needs to be added so that uh, Podman can find the runtime. If, you, if the setting is left empty, it will look into the standard uh, passes, uh, pass like user bin for, for the binary. Otherwise, you could also specify a, a concrete pass where, where it should be looking. Um, yeah, and then basically, um, for, this, for this demo, actually, I uh, prepared a, a small next cloud image and, and configured it. So um, I will just launch, launch it now, which is already configured, and, and you can now see that uh, if you run a command in that container, so, so the container is launched, and, and, and now I run a, the unit name uh, dash A command there, and you see that it's running the uh, KVM small kernel, which is different from the host kernel, just as a proof that it's actually uh, using um, yeah, well, a different kernel and virtualization. Yeah, and here you see the, well, the application in action. I guess, yeah, most of you have seen this. Uh, just to take a look at how it looks from the, uh, from the processes, just uh, looking for the Conmon process, seeing what it launches, and uh, taking a look at its, its child processes to, to see, uh, yeah, the the whole ar architecture in action. So you see that Conmon has, uh, is talking to Kata Shim, which is like talking to, to the agent inside the, uh, inside the virtual machine and, and collecting standard in and standard out and, and uh, processing the signals of the container. And there you see the virtual machine running inside QMO. Um, that's basically it for the Podman demo. I'm not sure, do we have enough time for Okay, yeah, then let's try the other one. I have also um, prepared something uh, to show how, how to run it in, um, in Kubernetes. Basically, this Kubernetes cluster I'm using is, uh, is based on Cubic, so it's just a simple one with just a single mask and three workers. Um, all nodes needs, need to have the... Uh, Packages installed, of course. Uh, there's a small configuration change that needs to be made to the cryo configuration, similar to what we we've done for the uh, libpodconf. You need to enable uh, the runtime. It looks slightly different here, but it's essentially the same. You just define that you uh, have an additional runtime. In this case, the runtime will be called cutter runtime, and we'll also look for that, uh, for that binary. Uh, then you need to restart cryo and uh, also the kubelet service to pick up the changes. 
Um, you need to de do all that on all nodes of the cluster, of course, because you don't know where, where your workload is going to be scheduled. And then uh, in this case, uh, uh, yeah, you need to define a, a new runtime class for your cluster. Runtime class, this is a feature that got introduced in some okay, not too old uh, version of Kubernetes where you can define alternative runtimes so that you can switch your workload to like you use a different runtime. You can have like one container or one port using the standard uh, run C runtime and another one using kata in parallel on the same machine, for example. <laughs> and to do that, you need to have uh, this, this runtime class defined um, and uploaded to the cluster. I skip a bit here just to, yeah. Now there's a runtime class called kata. And um, basically, if you want to run an application, this one is a, is a sample application from the um, Kubernetes repository, which is just a very simple thing. It launches three Redis nodes and a simple PHP application which acts like a guest book. And in this case, I run the, um, the Redis uh, on the bare metal nodes or using the standard run C runtime. And for the front end application, the PHP thing, I decided to put it into uh, the runtime class cutter. You can see it here. That's all you need to change in the in the YAML file to have it run using kata instead of the standard runtime. So basically, this application just needs to be loaded into the cluster, and then uh, it needs to yeah need to wait until it's running. And let's skip over this. And basically, yeah, well, this is also proving that the application is actually running. And here I execute the same command as earlier for Podman inside, the, uh, inside the, the container, and you can see that it's also running in a different kernel than the host. I think that's basically it. Are there uh, questions? Oh, yeah, quite a few. Uh, what about startup time? Sorry? What about startup time? Like yeah, it's of course a little longer, um, but kind of the project is trying to optimize for that, and that's why they reduced the init RD to the absolute minimum. Like, you need, uh, well, the init RD basically just contains the kata agent, and it boots, um, in our case, it's like, uh, I'd say two, two and a half seconds for booting up the virtual machine. But uh, it can be made even faster. That, that, that's what we were saying about uh, using smaller and tailored kernel and also uh, mm, special purpose uh, virtual machine monitor. Right now, what you get uh, is, uh, yes, a smaller kernel, but a pretty standard QMU as a machine monitor. While we would want to use uh, either a different machine monitor than QMU or, as I said, QMU with uh, configured in such a, in a special way, which would reduce a lot the um, startup time, for example, and also the memory footprint. And this is something which is not currently there yet if you install the open source packages, but we will, it will in, when it's ready. So, um, hi there. Um, I was about to ask the same question, and the mm -hmm. follow up was like, uh, have you tried some sort of uh, VM reuse for a different container, or you always, uh, is Kata always starting from scratch? Um, currently, it's always starting from scratch. So there was, I think there was once an idea to just uh, start the virtual machines from a snapshot. So like, like taking a running machine, taking a snapshot and cloning that and then starting it up again. Um, I don't know if that's uh, still an idea or if how, how that really worked out. But uh, yeah, things like that can be done. But there is no, currently no, um, like for example, pre-start or something, like keeping a couple of virtual machines running in the background or something that's not there. I, I think, uh, I'm not sure, but I think there are things so like uh, doing uh, things in parallel, so like preparing the storage while uh, the virtual machine right. is booting, uh, so to parallel yeah, things. It's, yeah, it's, it's for example, it's booting up a very small uh, machine and later on uh, adding memory to it via hot plugging and, and uh, pl hot plugging the network device when the kernel is already booting and, and things like that. Okay, we're out of time. Thank you very much. Cool, thanks.